In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a glowing text effect in PhotoP. Okay, so let's get started. So here we have a dark background. It's not quite black. It's got a little bit of a pattern to it, but you can really use this on any background that you like. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new group. So I'll go down to the bottom right corner and click on the folder icon. And I'm just going to call this glow. And the reason for this is we're going to apply the effects to this folder so that anything we put inside it will be affected. So let's write, create some text. Press T for my text tool. Choose a font that I like. This ah, existence, the one it's already set to is quite nice. I'll just click anywhere in the middle and I'll just create a um, glowing effect. Any text you like. I'll just enlarge this, to fill more of the screen. Okay. So it's quite important for this effect that the text is actually white. You can do it in other colors, but to get more of a neon effect, the, the very core, so the center of the glow, i.e. the text would, would always be white because it would be the brightest part of the glow. So what we're going to do now is go to the actual glow folder itself. So not this text layer, but the main folder layer above and double click to the right hand side in this empty space to get to the layer styles dialog. Now here is where we're going to create all the actual glow effects and you can experiment a lot in this section, but for the moment, I'm just going to show you how I like to do it. And then you can play around with different colors and blend modes and all sorts of other things. So the first port of call is to click on the outer glow option at the bottom here. Now yours may be set to all different settings compared to mine, but what I'm going to do is just go through from the top to the bottom and show you what I would change them to. So let's start with the blend mode. So I'm going to start off with linear dodge because it just gives the most reliable results and a pass tail keep to hundred for this. And I'll go down to this color box here and this is where we're going to choose our glow color. Now I actually quite just like this magenta color down here that's in the sort of preset colors, but you can pick whatever color you like, but I'm going to go with this magenta to start with. Okay. And now I'm just going to go to size. On this technique box, by the way, make sure it's on softer. Precise just gives a bit of strange edges and artifacts. So using size, we're going to go up. In fact, let me see if it'll let me zoom in so you can see a little bit more of the effect. So for this first layer of glow, I'm actually going to do this in three stages, by the way, because if you just use one outer glow, it just looks a bit dull, a bit generic and it doesn't really look like a nice glow. It just looks a little bit fake. So I'm going to use this for the initial glow, which is the small, more intense glow that's just coming off the text. So for this, we want the size to be quite small. We don't want to create a big fuzzy glow like that for this one. We want to keep it quite small and you can increase the intensity of it by either decreasing the range slider, as you can see there, or increasing the spread slider. That's if your opacity is already 100% and you want it to be a bit brighter. So for this one, I'm just going to, I'm not going to make it too strong, but I'm just going to drag the range slider down. So we've got a nice narrow, but quite a strong glow around the, um, around the text. That's our starting glow. And unfortunately in Photopea, you can't add an additional outer glow to the same layer style window which is a bit of a problem because I want to add two or three glows to the same thing. So how do we do this? Well, we use drop shadow because drop shadow without distance. So when the distance slider is set to zero, it is basically act like an outer glow. So what we'll do here is we'll go to the same process. We'll change the blend mode to linear dodge and we'll change the color to that same magenta. In fact, let's not make it exactly the same. Let's just tweak it a little bit because it's quite nice if you have a little subtle variance in the colors. Okay. And we'll go down to distance, obviously make that zero size and spread. So we'll, we'll repeat what we did last time, but this time we don't want such a close glow, like a tight one. We want it to be a little bit further out. So if I drag the size up, it's quite subtle on the screen now. But if I increase the spread, you'll see more what this is doing. 
So again, it's just balancing the size and the spread slider. So we want here like a secondary glow. So you can see the original outer glow, which is that really bright, colorful magenta glow. And now this drop shadow glow that's going a bit further out. It's a little bit softer and it's not as intense. So something like that's quite nice. And then we're going to do that one more time. But this is super easy now because you'll see next to the drop shadow, it's got a little plus icon. And if you click that, it will make a duplicate drop shadow with the same settings as the as the one that you've just created. So it already gives us a good starting point. So the colors all set up and all we're going to do here is make it even bigger again and actually decrease the intensity of it because the closer the glow, the more intense and the further away the glow layer gets, the less intense it will be. So we might drop the spread down and maybe even drop the opacity down a bit and crank the um, size right up, something like that. So now if I turn all these on and off, um, you in reverse order, you can see exactly what we've done. So that's the third. In fact, let's start with, let's start with nothing. So that's just the plain text. And we've got our initial outer glow, which is the intense glow. Then we've got the secondary glow. And you could quite happily stop there. I mean, that looks quite nice on its own. But then just to make things a bit more special, we've added a third glow using a drop shadow. That's actually just given it just a bit more life and a bit more realism. So at this point in time, we can click OK because I'm happy with that. And you could stop there. I mean, that looks, well, I think that looks fantastic on its own. And you could definitely call this a day now and have that as your effect. But if you've got a background like this, what I actually quite like doing is underneath the glowing text layer or whatever object you put into that folder, by the way, will have that glow applied to it. It's not just text. Um, I'm just giving you an example on text. So underneath that glow layer, I'll create a color fill layer with the same or a similar color. Click OK. And now, of course, that's going to flood the entire screen. So I'll click onto the layer mask and press Command or Control and I to invert that. We'll change the blending mode on this one to color dodge and not linear dodge, just because it's a bit more subtle. I'll press B for my brush tool or select the brush tool from the toolbar. I'll make sure that it's on this as opposed to that. We don't want the tapering for this. So if you click here, you'll make sure that you don't get any tapering if you're using a, a Wacom tablet or a graphics tablet. I'll just make the brush a little bit smaller, make sure it's as soft as it can be. And with a lower opacity, so maybe we'll change the opacity to something like 30%. I'm just going to paint behind it an additional background glow. Or we might make the opacity even less. Let me Command Z that to undo it. Make the opacity even less. And I'll just and all this is doing is, is just painting a more subtle version of the overall glow in the background. And it doesn't have to be super even. In fact, it looks better if it's not super even. And we're just, this is just enhancing it and putting a bit of the glow onto the background. Now I know this is looking too much and that's absolutely fine because I'd rather overdo things and then go to the opacity of the actual layer and decrease or increase to taste. So I'm just gonna, Put that up there and just add that as just an additional extra detail. So if I go here, we can reposition as we like. And also it's quite fun to tweak some of the colors a little bit and see what different effects you can get. One more tip. I was, I was just going to end the video and I thought, no, I've got one more tip actually, which is quite fun to play with, which is now we've got this set up. If you go into the main glow folder again, where we've made the effects and you double click to the right hand side here where it says EFF, you'll reload the layer style. Now what we can do for a slightly different look is go into some of these effects that we've already created and play with the blend modes. So we set everything to linear dodge just because that's quite a reliable effect. But once it's all set up, I could go into this one and think, well, what would it look like with color dodge, for example? So we can change that. 
or hard light and it will just tweak and change the appearance and you can have a play around with these and just um, see if it creates any more desirable effects or if it you know completely changes the look it might like that it's just giving it a completely different look and you've got a completely different like glow effect now in the background and it's highlighting the texture of the background a bit more that was just it a little bonus tip for you to play around and discover new things well i hope you enjoyed this video today and i really enjoyed um showing you these techniques so i'd love it if you click click a like and subscribe if you thought the content was worth it and i will look forward to seeing you in next week's video